Hi, welcome. We're going over uh, uh, how to punish opening mistakes, because what is more fun than totally destroying casual players, right? Um, we start with e4, e5, knight f3, and after f6, this is our first opening mistake, because it doesn't do much defense, and uh, bad badly at that, doesn't develop anything, and it opens the black king, so we just go and we take on e5. Now, let's say black is knight, wait a second. Let me not take the, uh, the knight and actually play the best move, queen e7. Then, okay, perhaps black has a bit of a playable game, but white clearly comes out better because we move our uh, knight back to f3. And after queen takes e e4 check, we just play bishop to e2. And now next move will be castle. We can develop our uh, knight with tempo. Perhaps we play d3 or even d4, depending on the position. We are clearly up in development and the black queen is also clearly misplaced. So white is clearly, clearly in the better position here. But the uh, we will analyze actually a bit deeper if black takes. If black takes the, the knight and it's like, you know what, I want to have a horsey more, then congratulations if you are already at like an 800 plus player or you have watched this video entirely, you have now won the game. And the idea is, is actually quite simplistic if you follow the uh, basic principles of chess. The black king is open and we have a check uh, that only has options that are all nasty for black. So after this check, black has two options. G6 is a very classical uh, queen to uh, takes E5 check. And now after the queen in intervenes, we take on H8 and we win the four rook. Let's say we try to trap the white queen. It won't work because we stay calm and play d3. And one of the next moves is potentially bishop to h6, freeing the queen. And white's material edge will be more than enough to secure the game. So g3 is not an option. So the only other move is king to e7. After king e7, we take check. Now king to f7 forced. After bishop to c4 check, Black again has uh, two options. We can choose to defend with d5 or to walk with the king. Let's try walking with the king first. Um, we now play queen to f5 check, king to h6, d4 check, g5, and now the very nice little quiet move, h4. So h4, uh, h4 comes with lots of threats, and one of them is very concrete. Bishop takes g5 check and winning the queen is one of the problems and there really is no good defense against it um, let's go over m some moves uh, king h5 is mate in one so that's not an option um, bishop b4 check just postpones the problem and we also now have our bishop on pre so that's not an option then let's try walking away with the king shall we king g7 no no you go back says the queen and after king h6 Double check and mate. Very nice finish in my opinion. So that is not an option. So since we cannot walk with the, with the king, oh, we need to make a different decision here and the only other decision is d5. So we intervene with the pawn and after d5, the bishop takes d5 check, king to g6. Now the point of d5 was is th uh, the black bishop on c8 is defending the f5 square. Fine says white. We play our pawn to h4, and well, let's first see what happens if black chooses to kind of ignore it with a move like bishop e7. We get queen to g3 check, and now there are two options. One of the options is king f6, but boom, mate in one again, so that's not an option. Uh, so king h6 is left, d4 check, yeah, g5, now we take, double check, king to g7 and now queen to e5 and it's all over check king must move well we win the rook if nothing else it would be enough for material advantage again but also our next threat uh, taking on h7 is just too strong of a threat and it's it's all over so that is also not a nice option so we should stop the threat that white has and we can try with h5 give a flight square for the king it stops the move h5 so it gives gives it looks to give some breathing uh, space now we have the beautiful move as you saw 
bishop takes b7, boom. I just explained that the point of d5 was the square on f5. And here, if the bishop takes on b7, bishop takes b7, then yeah, the square on f5 is not defended anymore. So check, and after king h6, d4, check again, g5. Well, if you now say, oh, I played this one because I saw that earlier check and I win the queen, that's fine. It will win the game, absolutely. There is a stronger continuation. And I just want to, uh, to show it because it actually will lead to a very beautiful mate, potentially. Queen f7, the threat is still there. And after the check, we even have the threat of queen takes on h5 with the mate uh, option. So let's say, uh, yeah, the black king is feeling a bit claustrophobic because he can go nowhere. Let's say black tries to save himself with uh, this move, rook to h7. We have the very beautiful finish. H takes g5, check. Queen takes g5, and boom. Rook takes h5, checkmate. I think this is a very, very pleasing uh, checkmate, in my opinion. It looks very nice. So we have established that after the beautiful move, bishop takes b7. You cannot take the bishop. So let's just play the best line for black here. And the best line actually is to play bishop to d6, harassing the queen. We want to keep the queen on the fifth file. So we stay on the fifth file and move to a5. Then black has the option to play knight to c6. And now we take the knight with the, uh, with the bishop, because the knight was attacking our queen. And in this position, it, we have a very strong material advantage as white now. Uh, and also a stronger overall position, but it is the material advantage that will now give the edge and you will win the game as white. Okay, so there was one uh, one example of punishing an opening mistake like, like uh, F6. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, if you want to see more uh, opening mistakes uh, punished, or if you prefer me to go over uh, Grandmaster games instead. I will follow up as, uh, as you say, and I will upload future videos of your choice. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and have great chess games. Bye-bye.